contribute to the body of law that is corporate uh, governance or controls corporate governance within uh, the corporation. Well, uh, to start with, uh, states pass corporate laws that provide for shareholder protections and procedures within the corporation. These are the most direct corporate governance laws that must be uh, must be complied with by the corporation, uh, beginning with the creation and then maintenance of the organization under state law. Uh, then there is uh, the uh, several federal statutes regarding disclosures and things like that. Uh, the most notable being the securities laws for uh, the issuance of securities and then uh, the uh, later reporting of the seller exchange of uh, securities by reporting or public companies. Um, so that's the Securities Acts, uh, the 33 or 34 Act and any SEC rules or regulations uh, accompanying those. Um, Dodd-Frank uh, has uh, extensive uh, disclosure and reporting requirements uh, and procedural requirements as well. Uh, lots of them focus on the finance or banking industry, but others uh, target uh, corporations, uh, particularly in their uh, financial disclosure role. Uh, Sarbanes-Oxley has a has a great deal of uh, internal compliance and reporting standards, such as uh, public company auditing process and the the uh, procedures that they have to undertake to disclose uh, information, and then other uh, uh, independent director or conflict of interest provisions under Sarbanes-Oxley. Um, and then you have the industry standards uh, applicable to certain uh, uh, securities exchanges that they'll place requirements on the corporation in order to uh, be listed on that exchange they have to meet with these uh, corporate governance requirements lots of these are disclosure requirements um, and then the reporting uh, requirements or methods that they 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 follow and timeliness and things like that and then uh, the independence in decision making particularly at the director level um, it, it and failure to meet these can get you barred or delisted from a beginning uh, a certain exchange and then there's the internal uh, governance documents such as the uh, bylaws and uh, sometimes shareholder agreements can affect corporate governance procedures uh, particularly with regard to the actions of shareholders in interacting with the corporation and then your articles of incorporation and bylaws okay uh, internal codes of ethics can also <clears throat> affect the corporate governance uh, procedures in the organization and then you've got some third-party firms that have an influence on the internal corporate governance structure through uh, the through their effect on the dissemination of information and how that affects uh, the um, corporate voting process. Uh, uh, generally these are known as proxy advisory firms and they uh, undertake the task of <clears throat> representing the interest of shareholders and third parties in uh, distributing information, uh, offering alternative means of uh, proposing certain actions by the corporations or uh, such as the election of a given director to a director seat or something. And these advisory firms do so by using the corporate governance procedure to get information out to uh, individuals who are voting by proxy, uh, which uh, without these firms can sometimes be uh, difficult to do, okay, uh, because the board of directors generally uh, controls the information that that comes out in the uh, proxy disclosure statements. So uh, collectively, these are the laws, rules, regulations, uh, and industry standards that affect corporate governance practice.